TypeScript has single-handedly been the best tool for improving my productivity in web development. Using a static tag system can help prevent many potential runtime errors as applications grow. Vue 3 has been completely rewritten in TypeScript, which means we no longer need any external libraries for using TypeScript with Vue. Today, we'll be creating a basic user sign-in flow with TypeScript and Vue 3. We won't be building any backend for this example, but we'll be creating some asynchronous functions to show you how you would call a backend API in your application. We'll first create a new Vue project with TypeScript support using the Vue CLI, and then we'll walk through an introduction to TypeScript with Vue. This tutorial will assume you already have an understanding of the Composition API, as we will be using it to create components. If you want to learn more about the Composition API, you can check out some of my other videos on my channel where I go over this topic in more detail. Since this application is small, we'll be using the Composition API for creating global state instead of Vuex. I'll also show you how you can set up your VS code to get better TypeScript inferencing within the template of a single view component. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe and you can find a link to the full source code in the description below. Let's begin with creating a new view project with TypeScript. Once you have the Vue CLI tool installed, we can create a new project by running view, create, and the project name. The CLI will prompt you with a few options and it may look different depending on the version you have installed. Make sure you select manual features to enable TypeScript support. Once the app generates, we can open it in VS Code and start the dev server. Opening the app.view file, you'll see an example component that looks a little different from non-TypeScript components. You'll notice a lang equals ts attribute, which indicates we'll be using TypeScript in the script section of our component. You'll also notice the component is wrapped in an extra define component function. This function does nothing more than provide some out of the box type checking for our component. For example, if we accidentally tried to import an object that is not a view component, we'll get a warning because the component option only accepts objects with a component like structure. Without the define function, we wouldn't get this type of checking advantage. When it comes to defining props in a component, most of the time the typing inferenced by TypeScript will be correct. However, sometimes you may need to manually specify types, which can be done with prop type. For example, if one of our props was a user object, which contained a name and login, we can set the type as an object and use the as prop type to define its typing. Now, when we look at the props in the setup function, we can see we get the proper typings for the prop object. If we were to now use this prop in our template, you'll notice that it does not have TypeScript inferencing. Luckily, we can use Vuture, the VS Code extension for Vue, which has a beta feature to allow you to enable this feature. All we have to do is go to settings and enable template and turbulation service. Now, we can get TypeScript inferencing in our Vue component template. Sadly, when it comes to using your components inside other components, there is currently no native way for inferring what the props and event types will be. If we were to import this component we just created, which expects a custom object, we can see that it recognizes there is a property, but it does not warn us when we pass in the wrong value type. If you truly want full TypeScript support, you can use the Vue.jsx syntax, which supports TypeScript inferencing for props. In the future, I'll probably create a video going over this topic in more detail, so keep an eye out for it. Now that we have a basic understanding of TypeScript and Vue, let's start building our application and diving into building components using the Composition API. To reiterate, our application will prompt a user to sign in, and once they have logged in, it will display a simple counter. The asynchronous calls created by the user logging in will not actually call any external backend API. Instead, we'll create a fake request module that will return promises. Inside this request module, there will be two functions. The first will be a login function. It will take the user's information and make a fetch request to a JSON file 
which contains an array of all the static users and their passwords. The second will be to determine if a user is currently logged in. This will fetch another static JSON file with the user's name and password. This is clearly not a secure solution for user authentication, but is intended to show you how you could use async calls with the Composition API in a real-world project. These functions should be replaced with real API calls to endpoints that support secure authentication such as sessions or JSON web tokens. Now that we have the request module out of the way, we can treat them as real APIs and call them within our view application. For styling, I've added the Bootstrap 5 CSS to the index.html. Sadly, View Bootstrap is not compatible with View 3 yet, or I would be using that instead. Let's get started by creating the counter, since this will be a simple component and give you an idea of how we'll use the Composition API for global state when handling user sign-in. To begin, we'll create our counter store in the stores folder. Defining our state is simple. All we have to do is create a reactive object and add a counter property. The reactive function will automatically infer the typing, but you could also pass in a type as a generic if you'd like to be explicit. For our getters, we'll create a computed property that multiplies our state by two. Once again, the computed function will infer our typing as a number. Even though the getters are already reactive, I'm going to wrap them in a reactive function. This will stop us from having to use the dot value every time we want to access the computed property. Now, if we do getters, we can see that the times two getter returns a number instead of an object with a property dot value. I find this makes the code more readable since we don't have to use dot value every time we want to access the getter. For actions, we'll create a simple increment function that will increment the counter by a given value. Let's export all of these so that we can access it in our component. For the actual counter component, it will import the counter store we just created and return it in the setup function so we can access it in our template. We will display the current count and the count when multiplied by two. And whenever a user clicks on the increment button, it will call the increment action we defined previously. Cool, we've created a basic counter in view with TypeScript. Now let's create the simple sign-in system to hide our counter behind. Let's create our user store that will contain our state, getters, and actions. The state will hold its name and username, as well as an error property. We'll use this error field to notify the user if they entered incorrect information when trying to sign in. We will also need a getter, which will tell us if a user is currently signed in or not. To do this, we'll simply check if the user field is empty. For our actions, we'll need to import our request API module we created at the beginning of this tutorial. The getUser function will load a user if they are currently signed in. This will need to be called when the application is initially loaded to check if the user is currently signed in or not. The function will simply take the user return from the request and update our state. When we go back to creating components, we'll add this into the view lifecycle hook. The login function will accept the username and password and call the API to check if the user is valid. If the user is null, we'll set an error message to inform the user the information they entered is wrong. If we found a user, we'll update our state with the corresponding values. To log out, we'll simply need to reset our store state. Depending on how the authentication system is done in the real-world application, you may need to clear cookies or call yet again another API endpoint. We'll export all of this so that we can access it in our components. We'll start by creating our sign-in forum. This will probably be the most complicated component. We'll create a forum with a username input and password input. We'll bind these values to reactive forum object so we can access them in TypeScript. When a user clicks the login button, we'll have it call a submit function. Now let's import the user store so we can finish off this component. The onSubmit function will call our login function we defined earlier. We'll also return the store in the setup function so that we can add a section to the template that will display the error message. With the form complete, we can import it into our app.view file 
along with our counter component. As I mentioned earlier, we'll also need to import the user store so that we can check if a user is already logged in when the application loads. To do this, we'll pass our get user function to the on mounted view lifecycle hook. Last thing, we'll need to add a VIF so that the sign in form is only displayed when the user is not logged in. We can check using the is logged in getter, otherwise, we'll show the user counter and give them a nice welcome message at the top. We'll also create a simple button at the bottom so that they can click it, which will call our action to sign the user out. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned about TypeScript in Vue. If you made it this far, you might as well subscribe and check out some of my other videos. Hope to see you in the next one.